The B-2 Stealth Bomber is probably one of the most iconic planes to have ever been built. Its sleek flying wing design makes it practically invisible to radar and incredibly fuel efficient, allowing it to penetrate even the most sophisticated of enemy defences. But how did this incredible aircraft come into existence and what technological advancements made it possible? The rise of stealth aircraft can be tracked back to World War I, when the Germans attempted to use transparent canvas to make their planes difficult to spot. That plan backfired as the glossy canvas made the aircraft even more visible in sunlight. The demand for stealth aircraft as we think of them today rose with the advancement of practical radar technology in the 1930s. The technology formed the backbone of Britain's early warning system during the Battle of Britain, saving uncountable lives from German bombing runs. Let's see how the technology works. Radar works by sending short pulses of electromagnetic energy in the form of radio waves outwards. The antenna then switches to receiver mode and waits to detect the reflections of these radio waves off distant objects. The radar now receives a blip on the screen called a radar cross section and its size changes with the magnitude of radio waves returning to the antenna. The radar cross section is a measure of how detectable an object is with radar. The size of the object is just one factor, which can be mitigated with clever engineering. The B-2 has a 52 meter wingspan, yet it has been reported to have the same radar cross section as a large bird, so how does the B-2 manage to achieve this incredible feat? The core concept behind the B-2 is reflection. It was designed to reflect the radio waves away from the source, so that they never get the chance to be detected. What is amazing is that every surface of the B-2 has been designed with this in mind. The aircraft was designed with the aid of computational models and a supercomputer, which resulted in an incredibly complex curved shape. This technology was not available during the development of the F-117 Nighthawk, resulting in its much simpler faceted flat panels. The B-2's radar cross-section is further reduced by its streamlined flying wing design, with its highly reflective engines embedded within the aircraft, where radar cannot see it. Even the engine's air intakes and exhaust vents are located on top of the plane to ensure they cannot be detected by ground-based devices. But the flying wing has some unique flying characteristics that took many years for Northrop to perfect. One of the most notable is the lack of a tail rudder to control yaw. The B-2 instead uses split rudders on the tips of the left and right wing. They act as air brakes to slow either side of the wing and cause a yawing motion. But when in use, the split rudders can increase the radar cross-section of the plane, so the B-2 can also use differential thrusting of its left and right engines to allow it to be controlled when stealth is a priority. Beyond its shape, the B-2 is also made with advanced composite materials, which are capable of absorbing and dissipating incoming radio energy. The exact composition of the B-2 is classified, but we know that the skin is made from a carbon fiber reinforced plastic, while the leaning edge of the B-2 is lightly painted with a material which contains small particles of iron, which absorb electromagnetic energy and converts it to heat. With these technologies combined, the B-2 barely even registers on radar screens. What is even more terrifying to think about is the fact that the Nazis had created a very similar plane all the way back in 1944. The Horton 229 incorporated many of the same principles as the B-2, long before the stealth technology that made the B-2 possible was fully understood. Today, we can only imagine the impact this plane would have had if it was ready before the war's end. Thanks for watching and welcome to all my new subscribers. I told myself I would not set up a Patreon account until I hit 10,000 subscribers and I blew through that goal with my previous video, so the link for that is below, along with my Instagram, Facebook and Twitter accounts. I'm really excited for my next video, so make sure to subscribe and watch it when it comes out.